now in this video we're going to make a, uh, I actually built it, a prototype voltage booster circuit using a 555 timer and inductor. Um, almost all these components are really easy to get. You probably already got them or a really close value except for maybe the 10 millihenry inductor and the uh, 16 volt uh, Zener dial. Again, they're not hard to get but they're not near as common as the other uh, components. But uh, in any case, the basic principles. We have an inductor there. So in the last video, we took the 555 timer. When I pressed the button, we got a buzzer to buzz. So it's alternating high and low uh, fairly quickly. I don't know the frequency when the switch is closed there. So I'm not gonna talk too much about uh, this uh, circuitry from that. Um, but if we're not pressing the switch, then the output just stays low. When the output's low, the transistor's off. So to begin with, we have a uh, current path here. You can see through the three resistors because we do need quite a bit of current for the circuit and the inductor there in series. And then remember, this is off, it's like it doesn't exist. And then we got a dial there. So we're gonna lose about 0.5 volts, uh, but it will charge the capacitor right there. Uh, about 0.5 volts less than the five volts there. When, then current will stop flowing once it charges. Then, when we turn the transistor on, all of a sudden current can flow through the inductor uh, to ground right there. And the resistor is helping to limit current. And uh, so it's conducting, but then it turns off again. It stops conducting through the transistor. Inductors keep passing current once you cut uh, power from them for a little bit. So you get a pump of current uh, going that way uh, through the dial because that's the path to ground. And uh, when you put more current into a capacitor, the voltage always goes up. There's a linear relationship. You put uh, twice as much current in, voltage is going to go up twice as fast and so on. But in any case, so it pumps that uh, voltage up. Now we got a Zener diode here. Zener diodes have the basic property. You use a reverse bias, so the cathode is actually more positive than uh, the uh, anode right there, anode going to ground. Use a reverse bias. They can conduct current reverse bias without being destroyed as long as you stay within their wattage limit. Um, so in any case, uh, 16 volts, then it will start passing uh, current. So if we try to pump this above 16 volts, it won't. We'll have a path there for current to go to ground. It'll limit that voltage to 16 volts uh, that the capacitor charges to. So I'm using 47 microfarad capacitor. Uh, smaller value capacitors will charge up uh, quicker to a higher voltage. Um, larger capacitors will take longer because they take more current for their uh, voltage to go up. Hopefully that makes sense. So in any case, we got the voltage out there. This really won't uh, power much, maybe uh, LEDs, uh, Maybe I'll test it out later on. A bunch of series LEDs that get close to a 16 volt uh, for a drop total. Um, but uh, for now, we're just going to measure the voltage with a meter, which doesn't really take much current uh, to measure it. So hopefully it'll be pretty accurate. And here is the circuit on the breadboard. Hopefully you can see it. So uh, one thing I'm going to do, I showed you the schematic, so uh, I don't expect you to build it completely the way that you see it here. We're gonna take this little jumper, so I already knew the capacitor was discharged, um, but uh, we're gonna discharge it. If you think it might have been charged to a higher voltage, you'd wanna use a resistor to uh, discharge it. I'll get this other components out of the way, so hopefully they're not too distracting. Um, but in any case, what we're most interested in is the voltages. So we're gonna set the meter to measure voltage, and I have, uh, I'll measure the uh, supply rails right there. Should be five volts at the supply. A little bit shy. We're losing a little bit of uh, power from the resistance um, in the wires, probably. Um, but in case, let's uh, put it back. Otherwise, we get a negative voltage if I wire these backwards, which is okay, as long as you realize it's just because you have the probes backwards. So there we go. We got uh, zero uh, volts right there. I yanked the jumper, and as I said before, we're going to lose approximately half a volt uh, um, through that uh, diode there from the five volt power supply. And it looks like we got some leakage or something that is uh, making it go up. But uh, in any case, there you can see, out of that five volts, we're losing some from the diode. Um, at low currents, they, they can trickle through a little bit of current so that uh, voltage actually goes up. But in any case, there you go. Now you can see uh, voltage went above five volts. So it wouldn't do that unless we had um, some boosting going on. And uh, for some reason, looks like uh, we're topping out 15.9. That's because of this reverse bias theater down. So now the voltage is going down, the capacitor, maybe it's slightly damaged, it's been used before, um, and current's flowing through the meter. You can just stop measuring with the meter for a while and see how much the voltage went down 
when you start measuring again. There you can see it uh, didn't look like it went down very fast. So the vast majority of this current um, that is uh, dropping the voltage is flowing through the meter right there. Hopefully that makes sense. But in case you saw the boost, but only when I pressed the button, because that's what I wanted in my last circuit, in a stable mode uh, 555 that only uh, output a stable, it actually buzzed a buzzer when I pressed the button. When I released it, then it stopped everything, just held the output low. So we are done with the meter. We're gonna turn it off. Um, that's it for this video though. Check out one of the other videos I'm posting to the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.